Good morning. We are now in the second week of November and today um, I'm going to demonstrate a hard edge shine unlike um, the soft shine that um, we did last week and thank you for all your lovely paintings. Um, I really enjoyed seeing them, really good. Um, the light often obliterates everything on particular subjects and this is what I would like to try and portray today. And so the easiest way to portray um, a hard edge, to create a hard edged shine is to um, use masking fluid in a painting, a, a watercolour painting. Um, so I've that's the technique I'm using today. You can try without, but it's it, it gets quite quite tricky, and and uh, you tend to sort of have to work around shine, little areas of shine, and it makes it really quite difficult to work. Um, so try to ensure that you make the right marks if you use a masking fluid, um, as this can go wrong if care isn't taken over it and can create difficulties. Um, when it's removed. So I'm going to demonstrate a little mug of herbs today. The actual mug that I'm going to do is red um, and I haven't got two so that one's in a blue one. These are the colours that I've, I've used for my little mug of herbs and so you can see those as usual. And these are the tools that I've used for putting on the masking fluid. And I've done my drawing as you can see. I hope that's all in, I'm just checking. I think so, yes. And these are the tools that I've used. I've used a little ruling pen and closed it right up to get a, a fine line. And I used for the softer shine here um, a, a little rubber shaper which also has a brush end as well. And this is um, purposely made for applying masking fluid. So give your masking fluid a shake before you use it. Otherwise you get um, thick bits and sort of bubbles coming at you. So that doesn't work very well. Um, right, okay. So I'm going to begin with the foliage I think the the herbs because I want to work um, from top to bottom so that I don't put my arm over the masking fluid and pull it off too much so can you actually see my drawing there I've left it quite strong so that you can hopefully see it and you can see where I've applied the masking fluid keeping your head in one position helps so that your shine doesn't move every time you move your head and um, obviously allow it to dry before you paint over. So actually I'm going to now just start with, with the herbs. I've got some rosemary and some bay leaves in there. So I've got the usual um, mix of oreolin and Windsor Blue Red Shade because actually it's quite a quite a varied leaf. The the younger the leaf is, the lighter it tends to get. And I'm going to paint today quite quickly and quite loosely, just portraying these this subject in a quick way. Dropping a little bit of shine back on to my leaf as well because that's and it's got a soft edge too. So I've indicated that central vein without putting very much work into it, but you can get the the scratching tool out and put a little bit of scrapito into some of these if you wish. Just try not to overdo it too much. So there's a little bit of shine on the top of that leaf, so that's a little bit of soft shine, similar to what we were doing last week. I'm 
I'll probably have to stop and start because there's quite a lot of work and certainly quite a lot of leaves on the rosemary but um, I just thought it would make quite a nice little still life with this subject. I like my still life subjects to look quite natural and tell a bit of a story really rather than just pushing random things together that don't necessarily you know tell any tell the, the viewer anything really I mean I've seen people put things like I don't know a feather with an elephant or something and that's not particularly good to look at in my opinion so I like my little still life subjects to to tell a story and we'll be doing more still life subjects and getting more complicated with them but really today's thing is is the shine and we're building up to being able to do some more complicated things with our still life subjects a bit later so taking a bit more shine off allowing it to dry a little bit before doing that because what happens then is you'll you'll get a nice shine piece of shine appearing there so i've got some red here and some raw sienna for making a bit of a sort of brown a little bit of stalk going on here I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin with my my green now to make it slightly darker these little leaves at the front here. The red will always make the green look darker and stronger and a little bit duller. So I'm looking for a nice dark green here for this leaf that's in the front. And I'm working in the direction on this leaf that I actually see the, the, the veining, the markings. That helps to get nice natural effect without too much work really. So that's a very old bay leaf. The older they get the darker they get, but they still seem to have quite a little bit of blue in them. Dropping water back on just to make that mingle and mix a bit. So I've got to be careful where I go now. There's another, another one sitting here and they do have quite a frilly edge. another dark one behind there but I've got to be careful not to let my colours run too much bit of a one here S sitting right down inside the, the pot gets dark inside the pot because it's got quite a lot of um, shadow being cast from the leaves and everything else that's going on above it. Right, so that's quite loose and drying up reasonably well I think. Try not to touch it too much more. 
So now I'll just work a little bit on the, there are some more bay leaves there, but I'm going to get a smaller brush out and just work a little bit on the, on the rosemary. You can see that there. So I'm not going to get fussy with this at all because it's going to take a long time to paint these little things in, these little leaves in. It smells lovely. And I have quite a little bit of yellow through the center. But also get quite dark in places as well. That's just a little bit there. And it's got a stalk coming through the centre. And that's gone down into the pot where it's really dark. So you can't actually see the individual leaves very well. They're all mingling together. They don't have a particularly, some of them don't have a particularly pointy end, so you have to look out for, for little details like that. But I'm glad that that one's, and that one, is sitting in front of the rim of the pot because it just breaks up the monotony of the the edge of the pot there and makes it more interesting to look at. I'm just quickly just painting these in. You can take more time over your paintings because obviously I have only a short time. It gets dark again in here. Really dark. Really, really dark. patches of light but mostly depth in there and you don't see what you've got as always until it's dry so another sprig of rosemary here And all of these little leaves kind of mingle together and that's why you don't want to be too fussy with it really because it'll look too contrived and it'll just sit there looking not quite natural. Nice depth again. dark but I don't want to make it really 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 too dark because the rim of my pot is dark and I want that to show up in front of the the depth of the inside the pot so that it stands proud of the, the pot there Right, just a couple more little bay leaves at the back there. Anything at the in the distance tends to have more blue in it, and anything towards the foreground has yellow in it when in the way of foliage. So just sort of tried for that a little bit. That applies in a more in a, in a landscape, but also in pots of flowers and things. Another one here, half of one. If you look into that pot of rosemary and and the bay leaves there are lots of different greens in there so it's nice to try and get that variation because it's always going to look good in your subject in your 
picture if your subjects have got variation in them. Right, good. So that's that's good enough, I think. That's shown you more or less what the, the, the technique that you need to use. Just put a few darker ones in here, in the front. So I have my herbs all mixed together. Might just make a little bit more of this one and this one. Okay. Right, there's some light in there and that's a good thing too. Right, stop touching it. Now I need to think about the the pot. Right. It's red. So I've got cad cad free red here. Make a watery mix of that. I'm going to start underneath the rim. And I don't have to worry too much about the... I need to get a nice smooth edge though. But I don't need to worry too much about where my light is because I've masked it off. So just make sure you work completely over the top of your masking because otherwise you'll get a distorted shape not necessarily the shape that you were hoping for so quickly bring that in if i were using painting a soft shine i probably wouldn't necessarily do the masking but i think with a sharp edge shine it's so much more help than if you are actually trying to create a because hard edge shines tend to have very very straight edges and so therefore you need to um, make sure you get that and it isn't always very easy if you're not using the masking so we'll let that brush do the work to get that nice shape. Now it's got to have a few darker areas in there. So I've got some alizarin here so I can see depth underneath the rim. So if you've got a similar liquidity on your brush to what you have on the paper and you drop that in it's going to blend without making a cabbage for you. I'm going to put a little bit of the Payne's Grey with the alizarin to make it even darker because I see a dark patch coming down there. And I now want to make it darker still under here. Again, I've got light coming from both sides of my pot. So now it's starting to look rounded. Can you see? with shadows coming from the leaves and various other places. Make sure you put enough pigment on your brush because it will dry up lighter. And that could be a disappointment, so you have to be careful of that. Right. I'll just pop the handle in and again that's got nice masking on it.
putting the red down first and then I'll go back in for the for the shadows. So we're working on shadows and shine as, as before. Isn't a particularly shiny mug this one. It's got kind of a matte finish to it, so I think that's why I'm not seeing quite as much shine within the thing. Um, smooth edged things and things like metal without any colour in it tends to have a lot more shine showing. So have a look around your kitchen and, and have a look at all your shiny areas and bits and pieces of metal things that you've got in your kitchen because you'll you'll get some nice surprises when you actually start sh studying shine and deciding you know what goes on with it and always there is going to be a lot of shiny things in your kitchen this is quite dark here i wanted to just get that but it's got some shine as well which is as I said before, it all eludes me a little bit. I don't know how it works. Uh, that's got an inside to it now. There's a, an inside to that. There's some depth inside that uh, little handle here. It's hollow in there. I've had to bring that depth up. That's because I work so wet, I sometimes have to go back in. You may find the same thing if you work wet. But there's varying sort of tones in this thing, created by the sh shadows and the shine. Right, I'm going to leave that. Now I've just got to put the rim in, and then I can concentrate on the shadow. I have no idea how the time is going because I didn't really properly put my thing on. Never mind. Let's have a look. Difficult angle this is. And I've got to be careful not to touch that too much. I would normally wait for this to dry. So if you did something like this where you put one colour on top of another one, let, let that area dry. I'm going right over the top here, top of my shine, with my little dark rim, and I've used Payne's Grey for that. So I'm going to have to try and avoid this, this um, painted area here. So, steady hand needed. So dark, 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 dark in there. Where the leaves are casting shadow as well. I've gone over my leaves that were sitting there, silly. Carried away. See if I can just bring those back a bit. There we go, there's my little leaf. So if you're quick and you use clean water and just a damp brush, if something like that happens, you can just bring it back because they were just breaking up the monotony and giving some shape to my rim. You can see the rim just through there, through there. And I think just a little bit there. So oh, good, that's okay. I think it probably is leaking a little bit, but then, you know, it is quite the wet, loose and free subject, so I won't worry too much. So now I just need to look at the shadows. 
And for the shadows, what shall we use? We'll put some red in here. And I think a little bit of the paint is grey. And some of this blue, perhaps, to make a nice sort of dark grey shadowy type colour watered down it's going to be nice warm shadow so make sure it is nice and watery because you don't want too much you don't want it to overtake and Take the eye too much away from the subject, okay? A touch more blue, I think. Nice. Right, okay. So I see... What's the shadow? It's coming this way. Nothing very definite actually today. I think because of all the the different shapes. But coming underneath here. I'm glad you can't see my face. I've probably got my tongue out. So that's doing that, and then just coming forward here, it's obviously more light coming from the window this side than there is the other side, so that's what's happening here, but there are light patches in in my shadows as well. There's light here. It's lighter here, so I'm lifting and drawing my brush and lifting that away. And I don't want a hard edge to appear here, so I'm actually just washing that away. Then there's shadow here from the handle, but not a Sort of handle shape there was earlier in the day but not now so just now it's left me with just a mark like that and it's actually got some shadow coming from the arm of my camera <laughs> coming down here like that but I'm going to leave that out because it's nothing to do with the, the situation that's going on in front of me there's just a little bit of something going on here and I suppose it's the leaves perhaps and then there's actually some more shadow here and that will definitely be from the leaves So quite complicated shadows this week. So try for that. But touch them as little as possible and try not to let them overtake your picture. Sometimes you want to put very dark shadow in, well, that's fine. I can't really see very much more. There's Kind of a little bit of shadow here, and that'll be from the rosemary, I guess. So nothing definite. The more you look, though, the more you do tend to see. You think you can't see the shadows, and then you do. So that's what my shadow is doing today. And now it needs to sit on the table. So like last week, 
I've got a line here. And I've got a line here. Not very well executed line. And then that can be whatever colour you like. And then just bring it down a little bit. Just to show that it's standing on something. But what there really, really is, is a lot of depth just under here. Quite strong shadow always underneath um, a pot of some description or and it's a hard edged sh shadow as well so I'm actually just going to drop a little bit of red in it at the top there and leave to that so it's reflecting a little bit of that colour down right so that's um, that's the method. I'm not sure I executed it hugely well today. But what I'll have to do now is come back to you in a sec. Well, actually, what I'll do is show you what else I've got to show you. And then I'll see if my masking fluid is, is dry or is dry around my masking fluid. I'll put that to one side for a sec. Marking fluid doesn't really like um, the hairdryer, but if I have to put it on, I, I, you know, well, we'll see what happens. So that that was my mug. You may want to get more complicated with your subject, and I got more complicated with those mugs, and put a bit of pen and wash on as well here and there, not everywhere. So that's one idea you can get complicated and you can stick with the leaves because we've been doing leaves and berries and they've got lovely shine as well so that's quite a good subject for now um, another little metal dish with lots of sharp shine and I don't think I did mask that one I can't remember I think I did in places maybe but not others but there's not a lot of masking on that one I don't think but you know whatever it's um it's a good thing to choose is it is a is a metal subject that's metal again and lighter colors and that really um still has the shine but you don't see it quite so well and with the shadow I just used the background for some of the shadow and tabletop as well and brought the light back down and round so that was just being a little bit um, different there choose whatever subject you like that one's got a lot of shine on it and this is the reason I want to show you this one is because if your um, subject your pot has got a pattern or something on it like this then your shine needs to go over the top of your patterning. Um, otherwise it looks as if it's a, a real thing sitting in front of it. Um, and the pattern isn't part of the, the pot, if you see what I mean. So that, that way you would need to um, draw your subject, um, your patterning on your subject, then put the masking on and then paint, okay? The, the shine has got to be the thing that's in the very front. Um, I just did these at the end of the lesson yesterday and liked them. It was just a little 10 minute sketch, but I liked them because I liked the shine. So little olives out of the garden. The darker the berry, the more shine and sharper shine it, it tends to have. So you could look out for something like that. And again, you can do a little quickie showing shine and shadow with your Tombow pens that we've been using. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick look now at this. It's still very wet, so I'm going to stop, let it dry and come back to you. Okay. 
Well, I've taken the masking off and the whole thing is dried up, dried up better than I thought it would because I didn't feel that that was a terribly good demonstration today, but um, it was quite a tricky subject to get done in the time, but I hope you got the idea of the method and that's the main thing. Um, but it does look a lot better now that we've got the masking fluid off and you can see that it's left a lovely hard-edged shine and that's what this week is all about. Okay, so I'll take a little photograph of my, my pot of things in case you want to copy that. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next week. And next week I think we'll be working on something like transparency, maybe some glass and um, whatever else, and maybe a little um, array of dewdrops and things like that that seem tricky, but if you know of an easier way to go about things, it will help you. Okay, so look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye.